What's up guys, welcome to Biohacking Explained. My name is Daniel and today I'm gonna to do a comprehensive overview of KPV, one of the most underrated peptides out there. KPV is part of the melanocordin family, just like melanotan-1. And it's, in my opinion, very underrated. It's better for your skin than BPC-157 and it works in different pathways that melanotan-1 does. It's also such a versatile peptide. It's one of the very few peptides that you can take it orally, subcutaneously, or even topically. KPV is a short tripeptide and it's composed of lysine, proline, and valine. It comes from the alpha MSH family, just like melanotan-1. Alpha MSH is composed of 13 amino acids and it's made up mostly of a large precursor called pro opio melanocordin. This in turn makes it part of the melanocordin family because of its role in skin pigmentation. Aside from its effects on melanocytes, alpha MSH has been found to have anti-inflammatory properties, especially in the immune and skin cells. Like I mentioned previously, lysine, proline, and valine are the three peptides that come from alpha MSH that compose KPV, which is a small sequence of alpha MSH. It has been found that KPV carries most of the anti-inflammatory properties without the need to have any effect on the melanocytes. The simplest way to explain this would be if AOD is a sequence for growth hormone peptides, KPV is a small sequence for alpha MSH. Think of KPV as being able to give you all the immunomodulatory benefits of alpha MSH sequence without all the side effects of skin pigmentation. KPV does not activate any of the melanocordin receptors and it does not raise CAMP at all. It works through a totally different pathway. Instead of working inside at a cellular level, KPV works going directly into the root cause of inflammation. It works directly to target cells, especially skin cells or immune cells, and it goes through peptide receptors, especially PEPT1. Once KPV is inside the target cells, KPV can actually block all the signaling from inflammation, therefore stopping inflammation at its rails. It works by blocking the NF-kappa B pathway. This pathway is absolutely essential for creating signaling that is pro-inflammatory due to its cytokines. So like I said before guys, KPV is stopping the problems at its root cause. It's not even letting the NF-kappa B pathway send any signaling to the cell nucleus. Aside from blocking inflammatory cytokines, it also helps you produce more anti-inflammatory cytokines. KPV is also stopping any type of signaling that comes from the interleukin-1 system. This is the system that's responsible from any inflammatory responses from stress and anxiety. So just to give you guys a small recap, KPV works intracellular within the cell, while it also helps you inhibit pathogen growth and it doesn't darken your skin in any way. The main reason that it's so hard to find studies on KPV is that it's a small sequence of amino acids, therefore making it really hard to patent so there's no laboratories that are willing to put up the money to make the studies happen. Another cool thing about KPV is that in comparison with alpha MSH peptides, you do not need any sunlight for it to work. It is beneficial to have sunlight, but it's not necessary. KPV can protect your gut lining, your skin, your lungs, and your GI from inflammation. I have even heard of cases of people getting better from bronchitis or asthma due to KPV. I've personally used KPV to fix my skin hyperpigmentation and it has made wonders happen in my skin, guys. But you could use it for colon problems, gut health, gut lining. If you have psoriasis, it could work for you. But remember, always try and fix your root cause first. So if you have a bad diet, fix that first and with KPV is gonna work synergistically. What are the side effects of KPV? For me, KPV is a very safe peptide. You're gonna have the run of the mill side effects. So for example, you're gonna have a little bit of flushing when you inject it. You're gonna have a little bit of redness in the injection area and maybe some nausea. That's about it. All right guys, so let's talk about dosages. So if you're gonna do it orally, I would do two 250 milligram capsules per day and you could titrate it up upwards of 2000 milligrams per day at most. So guys, if you're gonna do it orally, keep in mind that you're gonna be primarily targeting any type of gut issues that you have. Now, in my opinion, the most effective way to do it is subcutaneously. I would do 200 to 400 micrograms per day. I would do it indefinitely until your issues are resolved. Subcutaneous injection is gonna target both skin health and gut health. So keep that in mind. If you were trying to target an area in your skin, you could do it topically. I would do seven milligrams twice per day. Now keep in mind that a lot of people get impatient with KPV. It usually takes about four weeks to see any type of benefit from KPV. So always start low and titrate up guys. With KPV, there's no need to worry about antibody buildup. If you need to use it for 12 weeks or 16 weeks, I would do so pretty much until I see a lot of benefit from it or 
any of my issues are being resolved, then I would take one month off. Now let's talk about the best peptides that you could stack KPV with. So KPV, you could stack it with LL37 for immune function modality, or if you want, Thymosin Alpha-1. This is also gonna help you with immune function protection. Now if you're trying to use KPV for its aesthetic and recovery purposes, I would do the Clo blend. This would include GHKCU, TB500, and BPC157. This is gonna help you for any type of issues with injuries, or if you're trying to fix any problems like hyperpigmentation in your skin, it's also gonna help you resolve that. This concludes our comprehensive overview on KPV. Don't forget to leave a comment below and I'll send you my free longevity and looks maxing peptide cheat sheet. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below and like the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.